Dear brothers and sisters and comrades, I was asked to contribute to this conference with the title The New Role of United Arab Emirates in our region. The recent situation, what's happened in northern Somalia, it have ignited the consciousness of the majority of the population of Somalia and in the Horn of Africa. What is the interest of United Arab Emirates involving to such extent a very destructive involvement in the region? United Arab Emirates is a country was created by United Kingdom in 1960s. By 1970s, because wealth is discovered and became gradually a rich country because of the oil. And the leadership at that moment existed was Bin Ziyad, a traditional conscious man, to a certain extent a very wise man, who have understood United Arab Emirates must live with his neighborhood in peace and cooperation. Unfortunately, the younger generation who have been very far from the reality on the ground and understanding their neighborhood, and because they were born in a very rich situation, they have developed a totally different understanding of themselves and the region totally. The one who's leading now United Arab Emirates, he became the Nero of United Arab Emirates. He believed that he wanted to build his own empire. And we have seen that his intervention everywhere in the destruction of Syria, in the destruction of Libya, and finally an invasion of its neighbor Yemen. What are the reasons make United Arab Emirates to be very aggressive, a very small country and trying to play a big politics of big countries? The first characteristics of since 11, 12 years of United Arab Emirates is they believe that they wanted to create Dubai as a hub and a very important harbor or port in the region, by extension also to control all the ports around the region. The first step they have taken is by the invasion of Yemen. They wanted to control the port of Mokalla, the port of Aden, the port of Hodeida and Maha. By extension also several years back, they went and made a contract with the Djibouti government to invest in the port of Djibouti. Later on, this agreement came and they were chased away from Djibouti. Even though they wanted to court and the court decided in their favor that Djibouti have to pay, their assumption and their logic is they wanted to control all the harbors from Port Sudan until Kismayo and Yemeni harbor and to connect it harbor, when I say, is the ports, to connect it with Dubai and Dubai to be the hub of all these harbors. I think they have read their book wrongly. Dubai didn't exist when Aden, the South Yemen, when it was a colony of Great Britain, when Britain controlled Aden in 1839, understanding one day the Swiss Canal will be opened and the British took over from the French the Swiss Canal to protect their jowl, their colony, India. And they, they have taken Aden in, 19 in 1839 as a fuel fueling station. But gradually Aden became one of the most important ports whereby, uh, like Dubai now, it was a known shopping center. I think the leader of 
United Arab Emirates. He wants to bring Aden to Dubai and dominate the region. This is one of their strategies. To dominate the, the ports in the region, you ha they wanted through destabilization, not through cooperation. It is possible to cooperate and to deal in a business-like relationship, but they opted destabilization and overthrowing uh, the governments and interfering, interfering in the sovereign nation's internal affair. By extension now, United Arab Emirates have also have put in, in their pocket the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Dr. Abi. By extension, the another force which is contending against the government of Sudan, the Rapid Deployment Force, Hameti, he is also in their pocket. The third is also they have uh, influenced and they control is Chad. By extension also, they have also an, a strong relationship with General Haftar. General Haftar, he was one of the POWs who have been captured in the time of the war between Libya and Chad. In the time of Hussein Habre and Idris Dabe as his vice, they defeated the Libyan troops and captured more than 3,000 officers and soldiers, Libyans. And Hussein Habre sold it to United States, to Reagan. They brought them first to Kenya. From there, they took them to Latin America and they kept them. Imperialism thinks a little bit further, hoping one day to use them, and they have used them in Libya. General Haftar now, he controls part of Libya, and he's subsidized also by United Arab Emirates. For this case is that it angered their policy of destabilization inside Libya. Recently, the Algerian government have stopped all economic and diplomatic relationship with United Arab Emirates. The second factor of United Arab Emirates is stealing African gold. Their major concept is the smuggled African gold. To give you one example, that by supporting Hameti and Hameti dominating an, a mine, a gold mine in Darfur, almost more than 90 ton of gold of Sudan was smuggled to United Arab Emirates. At this particular time, a lot of gold smuggled from Zimbabwe and a lot of other African countries and was smuggled to United Arab Emirates. The recent development in United Arab Emirates economic appetite, United Arab Emirates had built one of the most sophisticated gold refinery. So United Arab Emirates is embarking on the looting of African gold. And to achieve that, it supports destabilization in the African continent and in a lot of other countries. Unfortunately, Dr. Abiy of Ethiopia, for not understanding, cutting and destroying all its relationship within Ethiopia and its neighbors, now it became a protege of United Arab Emirates. And of course, they have understood and studied him, their psychology, by throw for him little alms, what the Arabs call sadaqa, and they have understood him, and they bought him to be part of their project, like the project of Sudan and Chad, and like Libya, Haftar. I do believe that the people of the Horn of Africa they will be conscious and they will understand. And I do believe that this theft and uh, Nero craziness, one day it will awake the people and the intelligentsia of our brothers of United Arab Emirates people. And I'm sure that this craziness one day will be stopped. It will not bring any solution to the people of United Arab Emirates. This is a pure theft and it wants to create an antagonism and hate among the different peoples of the region. I salute the people of United Arab Emirates. I salute the wise, the far-sighted 
intellectuals of United Arab Emirates who wants a democratic situation in their country, in a country was ruled by one man, where there is no constitution, where there is no election, where there is no any legitimate criteria to rule, and while the population's money is used and abused for one individual ambition. For this, uh, I advise the Prime Minister of Ethiopia to rethink and not to fall in the trap because the small money they give him. Imagine in my country, Ethiopia, which is the population is in a miserable situation and the Prime Minister is, wants to build $16 billion palace. Just before I came to Nairobi, in Belgium, the popular press of the Dutch speaking, it published a very big article by putting the picture of Dr. Abiy. They analyzed the economic situation of Ethiopian people, in what condition they are living. They put his picture in the article, and they said that this man, he wants to build a palace of 9 billion euro. Now, for the fourth day, they are writing continuously. And I advise Mr. and Dr. Abiy to read also that it is the early warning of the different ministries of the Benelux countries, the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, and even France and Germany. They are advising their population not to go to Ethiopia. It is a red zone. There is no safe place, including Addis Ababa. This is, I don't think that Dr. Abi, his advisors, they bring for him this information or he is not willing to listen. I think for those who doesn't listen, who doesn't understand and try to be enemy of their own people and, and the region, I, I think we have seen the previous regime which was controlling the country militarily, intelligence-wise, economically, and finally they were overthrown by popular revolt and then brought a disaster to their own people. I think the destiny of Dr. Abiy will not be different than that. He was not learning from history to be an agent as being a prime minister of a very big country, to be an agent, a tap dancer for a very small country very far away from us, that is unfortunate and it is shame on you. This is my contribution to my brothers, to Afro-Asia Think Tank Institute, that it is we have to do further studies on this, what the Arab call it in their word, tamadud al-Imarati, the Emirates expansion, for how long it go. One forgets and the advice of a prominent Kuwaiti intellectual who have given a speech in one of Arab television. He says that trying being small to try to play a, a role as a big one is a disaster. He said. Kuwait at one time, it felt that she was very strong and a big one and it played and danced a very wrong tango and we played we paid the Kuwaiti people the price and everybody understand what does it mean the price of 1990. I advise the intellectuals and democratic forces, our brothers, sisters in the United Arab Emirates, to think twice that they have already created enmity and antagonism with them and the Yemeni people. I hope also now they are inciting and creating antagonism between them and the Somali people and further by extension also between them and the Ethiopian people. They should be very careful and they should think about it and they should do something about it. And I thank everybody for inviting me and particularly Professor Abdul Wahab. I wish you all the best, continue. And I think time, uh, if we work very hard, I see the end of the tunnel, there will be a light. We should not be frustrated. We should be strong. 
we should reach to our young people, we should give guidance, and I'm sure we have a lot of clever young people who can learn very fast, who can understand very fast, wherever it is, whether they are in diaspora or in our, our respective countries. And thank you very much.